We're going that way, this way, that way. Yeah. Oh, I've got it cold. I'm not touching it. I'm not sharing glasses today. It's dirty. I don't want to be sharing with that. Hello, welcome back to the Fellowship of Beer. Hi, this is Phil. That's Nick. There we go. We are in. They should know that by now. Yeah, yeah. We're in Steam Machine Brewing Company, which is our home. We We're not open. We're not. Just as well. Don't turn up. Sometimes we make these videos, we are open. It's, yeah. a, bit, it's a bit chaotic. It is, People yeah. shouting in the background, dogs running around. It's barking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, Box what 4. What the hell are we doing? Box, box 4. Box 4. Is it four? Of the I think so. It is Box 4. It has just launched, and we're going to cover some of the beers in this box. Yes. Where are we starting? Well, we've divided it up roughly into three categories, um, with no particular... And I say loose. We're going <laughs> sessionable ish, weird and wonderful. Yeah. And most of the strongs over there, mostly the people. Not sessionable ish. Not sessionable ish, no. correct. So without further ado, yeah. what would you like to kick off on? Kick off, kick off on. Easy for me to That's say. amazing. We're going to go for our dry hot Pilsner. Okay. What is its name? It is Been to Halla Tower and Back. Was Dry this a member's vote? Absolutely. Thing. Well done. It's pretty good. It's better than what we could come up with. It's been Just. dry hopped with Halatau Blanc. Ooh. It is the same as Steam Machine's tank beer. We took a portion off and dry hopped it with this beautiful, delicate... Is it German hop? It's German from the Halatau region. Wow. And it's a modern German hop. And it gives lovely uh, aromas of white grape, gooseberry, Sauvignon kind of rum. So it's quite delicate. Well, this is carbonated. That's nicely carbonated. Good start. Good start to the video. All right, here we go. Thanks. That looks lovely. Golden straw colour. Imported German Pilsner malt. Mm. You smell that white grape straight mm. away. It's just a vinous element. Was this it? pure German Pilsner malt? Pure German Pilsner malt. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely breakfast beer. Very nice. Okay. Grassy. Grassy. White winey. White winey. Lagery. It's, it's, it's lager with a bit more about it. Yeah, I like it. It's lager for... I like these delicate white grape hops drinkers. like this, like um, Nelson Salvin. I, I really like mm. I really rate them. How strong is it? It is um, 4.5. Oh, it is sessionable, isn't it? Sessionable, crisp, clean lager. I'm going to have some more of that in a bit. Mm. Okay, B number two. What do you want? To, do you want to go with the bog myrtle? Seeing as though that was. That's all on you, bog myrtle. <laughs> Seeing as though it's the same base beer. Let's do it. Okay. Explain what the heck this is. Every year we do a collaboration with Full Steam Brewing in Durham, North Carolina, because we're a steam machine brewing company in Durham. Not North Carolina, and <laughs> <laughs> so we've we've always opted to do. It, they were meant to be recipe swaps and brewing each beers on each side, but we kind of went off piste. Yeah, so we're still hoping to be invited there. Yeah, we have to be invited there. Yeah, which is like loosely too beer, too much too beer, too poor, too beer. There's a just given link, just link. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> Only fans. <laughs> um, steady. Uh, so, <laughs> this is uh, basically we both took our lager grist. Yes. Which and we we both aged it on wild plants. What did they use? They used yarrow, which we were hoping to as well. But our yarrow was really late uh. and really poor. And they also used like a North Carolina wild herbs that I don't know, like some native herbs their area. We don't get that down the burn, do we? We, we use bog mill, which it doesn't sound very what nice. What a beautiful sounding thing. It's got a lovely sounding name called Sweet Game. You know what we should do with bog mill? Put that on the bottle as well. <laughs> <laughs> Customer repellent. Okay, fair enough. We should have called it Sweet Gale. Or Miracle Gale, it's Latin name, which is also quite delicate. We didn't well, call it nice. bog mill. That's true. We yeah. should have done that. Yeah, never mind. We'll call it bog mill. Um, it sounds more like it's from Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> so... Bog metal is an ancient brew herb. It's a really, really old brew herb. It's it's how old? Get old. Okay. It's pre hot beers were made with this. So it is a lager first and foremost. It's been made with our lager yeast. It's been lagered, but the bog metal just adds a subtle herbal difference to it. I think you get eucalyptus, lavender, slight floral notes. How um, long did we bog metal it for? We bog metal it for the whole time I was away. Oh yeah, we did. So it's quite so it's nearly a month, isn't it? Ready? Okay, so. 
is slight carbonation. It should pick up more if you leave it longer. Sometimes I think when we use these wild plants, they kind of like have antibacterial properties which can sometimes stop the carbonation. But it's still got a little fluffy head. There's bubbles rising from the bottom of the glass. Probably wants a little bit longer. It does smell different. It does smell different. It still smells like a lager, doesn't it? It's still yeah. like a slight I get fresh. pure bog myrtle. <laughs> it's sure it reminds me of. What? A walk through bog myrtle. <laughs> Classic. Weirdly nice. You, do you see what I mean about that hint of eucalyptus? Yeah. Perfumey. Yeah. It's like having a really nice bath. <laughs> like a bath of beer. I'm really happy with that. I do think it needs I to like be it. left left alone. I like there. it. So please leave it a I little while. I don't think I'd like that when I saw you putting bog myrtle in a beer. What? Were you not confident in my bog myrtle? No, well, that was, yeah, I don't know. It works. It works. Yeah. Beer number three, what do you want to go? Oh, let's go session IPA. Okay. Session IPA, which has a member's photograph on it. Look at that. Where's it come from? The photograph. The photograph. I don't know oh, who's it come from. It's come from Liam Wallace. Thanks, Liam. It's a sunset, so yeah. it's called Flying Squids at Sunset. Oh, nice. Why is it called Flying Squids? Because we love having session IPAs that have squids and octopuses and cuttlefish in cuttlefish there. Cuttlefish references. Yeah. For the same machine So we've kind of gone full circle back to squids, haven't we? Back to squids. Yeah. Okay. So, do you remember which hops we used for this? Oh, I'm going to try and guess. Mutera. Idaho 7 and Citra. Oh, well done. All right. Yeah, I could remember. It says it on the label. So usually we just play around with different hops when we make a session IPA. Um, our base malt tends not to change very much. We tend to use a really good quality English malt. We tend to use a bit of oats, a bit of wheat. Um, that's towards the New England side of things, but I think a lot more quaffable. What yeast sweet. did we use? Secret. Yeah. Are we not giving that away? Do Is that we can't give like secret. It's a steam machine oh, secret. Oh, I won't give it away. Trademark. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Hmm. It smells fruity. Yeah, that is fruity, isn't it? It tastes like a really good session IPA. Yeah. It's just really easy drinking. Yeah. Three point four percent. Best selling beer in the tap room. Always. Which makes me cry. You know, Boring. look at all the other stuff we've got. Boring. Boring. <laughs> Drink the barrel edge beers, guys. No, you save them for us. Yeah. That's nice, easy drinking. Easy drinking, if you just need a beer, grab any of these three from yeah. the box, I reckon. Okay, last one. A oh, night this session. Tell us about a night This is our English bitter, strong bitter, is that what we're calling it? Yeah, strong English bitter, ESB. Chevalier malt. Chevalier what malt. What is Chevalier malt? So Chevalier malt was the most popular malt of Europe used in the late Victorian period and it went extinct. Boo. Because yields and stuff like that, doesn't, you don't get as much uh, crop yield for your money and things. Yeah. But our maltster Crisp worked with, I believe, Norwich University um, because all of their growing areas, East Anglia, and they brought this malt back, this, this grain, this barley variety back from like a handful of seeds. Oh, and from the dead. They've done the same with Hannah as well, which oh, is yeah, the original we've used it before, haven't we? We've used that. We, in fact, we got some of the first ever Chevalier, some of the first ever Hannah that was commercially available and made beer with it, which is exciting. Mm. Yeah, really good. We love this malt. We've used Chevalier a few times, haven't we? We've used it a few times as the base malt, but yeah. we also tend to use it, another steam machine secret. We do. We use it a lot in small quantities in a lot of our beers. Why do we do that? Because it gives a very unusual apricotty, marmalade, -y. Gra marmalade -y, sometimes grassy note yeah. to the beer. And we like to use it in like uh, double IPAs and hazy IPAs, just in small quantities, because it adds some of the fruity complexity yeah. to the beer, but being malt derived instead. How strong are we in this liquid? We are 5.5. Nice. And this was the first ever fellowship of beer. Are we still calling it a session of collaboration? At 5.5. .5. I mean... You're making cameras' toes curl with that <laughs> type of chat. <laughs> type of chat. No I offense. just thought it would be a good one to talk about. That's good. Um, so this was a collaboration with Chris Malt. So they came to the brewery. Uh, there's going to be a full video on that, so we don't have to go dive too deep into that. Maybe it'll even be done by the time the video's published. Wow. Yeah. And you can look up the link below. Or maybe it won't. You're going to be busy editing. Busy. With all time promises. Um, and 
Let's get it stuck in, shall we? Let's go for it. Let's have two glasses. Two glasses, please, Phil. Two glasses, no problem. There's one. There's one. There's two. Nice bit of carbonation there. Ah. Can't wait to get stuck in this. There we go. Lovely deep amber colour. Look at the colour. Lovely clarity to that. Oh, it smells malty. Oh God, but you do get that that marmalade apricot kind of quality as well. Not like a big giant hot bomb. No, no, no. It's a bready little number, isn't it? Mmm. Bready. So it's a fruit. I like mm. this kind of shows, I think, really good. what English bitter is capable of being when it's not homogenised, yeah. mass produced, or even just done with cheap, redundant ingredients. When, right. when you give it a decent ABV, use good quality ingredients, um, mm. you know, use the best English malt, the best English hops, yeah. use a delicious English yeast. That's a great beer to be having at 7 a.m. No, I'm joking, it's not 7 a.m. <laughs> I'll say English yeast. We actually used um, a hazy New England IPA yeast for this, didn't we? We did, didn't we? Um, as you can see, it's not hazy. The reason we did that is because we wanted to express more of those fruity kind of qualities in the beer. Which it does. And also, the New England yeast uh, allegedly comes from Manchester anyway. So, which is in England, not New England. That's really nice. I'm really happy with that. It's really nice. So to wrap up, four different beers. Um, from all the start, off the box. Yeah, I like... I mean, it's, that's a nice start to the Fellowship of Beer. You're showing some different ingredients, perhaps using different ways. Different styles. Wild ingredients. Different styles of beer. Four very nice on the paler, more sessionable scale of things. Well done. Well done, you. Well chosen, guys. Okay, let's... Um, Thanks. Are we going weird now? Let's end this video. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye.